Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at some different data than what we usually look at when we're normally looking at the next few days up to a week or two. Instead we're going to look at the next few weeks for the rest of winter i.e. February into the beginning of March. And this is because we've seen some very interesting data coming out over the past few days that could suggest that the cold weather will be returning as we head into February and continuing potentially even into March. Now, ever since that real cold spell we saw during the middle of January, we have seen lots of westerly winds, but the talk had been when would the cold return? It kept getting delayed within the models, kept appearing and disappearing, but some of these longer term ensembles are pretty bullish on that cold weather returning. And I did want to bring you the latest data for this. We normally have a look at these charts, especially early on the winter or look in our winter look ahead, looking you know, towards the Christmas period where there's a lot of interest. Um, but we'll be bringing you these charts again today to see what they are showing over the course of the next few weeks. We'll start on the 500 HPA height anomalies. We'll have a look at the 2 meter temperature anomalies. We'll have a look at the different re uh, weather regimes, uh, where essentially it's showing you what sort of weather patterns we could be seeing in a sort of interesting chart format. And again, it'll make more sense when we look at it. And then we'll finish by having a look at a meteogram, which is another great way of illustrating where sort of the averages are and the sort of spread from uh, the ensemble members in terms of temperatures. So do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on Twitter as well the links in the description. Now as you can see we're looking at Monday's data there's always a little bit of a lag for the data to come out but this is Monday's data and you can see this uh, is valid for Monday uh, earlier this week until next Monday. And you can see high pressure over the south extending northwards low pressure towards green and a classic westerly flow not suggesting anything cold at all actually pretty wet and mild for northern areas further southwards dry and mild perhaps colder interludes as we are seeing at times as we head into the following week though things change that big lobe of tropospheric polar vortex moves towards scandinavia and the higher pressure moves up towards southern greenland and northeast canada now, it's not a classic cold pattern, but would definitely suggest cooler weather, the jet stream pushing southwards, potentially northerly or northwesterly interludes. Definitely something we've been seeing from the GFS over the past few days. If you've seen the video from yesterday, the GFS was showing a very similar pattern to this into that uh, in that sort of 7 to 10 day period. Very interesting indeed. Beyond that, as we head into the middle of the month, look what happens massive blocking signal to our north up towards iceland greenland and lower pressure in towards central europe and from the looks of this and how this has transitioned that would be a lobe of very cold air pushing into central europe and bringing in northeasterly or even easterly winds for the uk very interesting indeed we've not seen anything like that on the extended range charts yet remember this is from the middle of february so it's around two or three weeks away but this would go bitterly cold indeed and the week following that almost looks like it is a full-blown easterly with massive high up towards Iceland and Greenland the winds coming in straight from the northeast turning potentially bitterly cold as we head towards the latter part of February and finally as we head into late February and early March flat easterlies now again I'm not going to call exactly what this will be at the surface it's impossible to say it will depend on air masses strengths of the highs but for example on the 2018 beats from the east I would be surprised if the anomaly charts for that were much different to this with low pressure to our south coming in from eastern Europe and Russia high pressure to our north and a flat easterly wind so you can see from the beginning of the run to now the low pressure and the high pressure have completely replaced each other changing the wind direction from a westerly to a flat easterly this would be bitterly cold it is one ecmwf run on monday well ensemble run so it has got some validity in it because it is an ensemble run but regardless that is uh, pretty impressive indeed to be seeing this sort of data. And then into early March, we continue with that blocking signal, perhaps with it starting to collapse a bit. If I do actually have a look at Sunday's data, I'm actually intrigued to see what it's showing. And again, very similar. 
So again, it shows you that, yes, individual runs will have differences, but the overall spectrum between the runs is very similar with high pressure to our north, low pressure to our east with cold air moving in. We go back to Saturday's run, similar as well. So definitely shows you the east of the ref is looking at something here that could be exceptionally cold indeed coming towards the latter part of winter of course there are caveats to that uh, the later we get in winter the more difficult it is for snow in the day the more difficult it is for ice days things like that so those things we'll look at near the time if this pattern comes off but regardless this would be a pretty exceptional indeed now with the reasons for this it's very difficult to say it does look like a uh, a sudden stratospheric warming response, which is possible since we did see a major warming towards the start of the year, and we actually saw a technical sudden stratospheric warming about a week to two weeks ago, where we did see the zonal mean winds reverse for about 24 hours. It's only just a major warming. Could that actually be causing this colder weather towards the middle to latter part of February? Who knows? It, we will have to wait and see. Eastern Earth really bullish here on colder weather. Now, these are the pressure patterns, so we'll have to see exactly what it equates to the surface. But the subsequent surface weather from these this run for the two meter temperatures here are cold as well. Now, many of you who've looked at you know our winter look aheads know that it is difficult to get, uh, especially the East of the F longer chart, longer range charts to show colder weather, especially beyond a week or two, because it, because of uh, the warming climate, it is very difficult to see these anomalies, uh, because generally we are average to above average, pretty much. I think the last two years, uh, I think ex. Uh, I think the last three years, except December 2022, have all been above average in terms of the CET. So it shows you most months now are above average. Most months come out orange or red. So any blues on here, for the UK at least, are pretty rare to be seen forecasted out of sort of a weak time frame when a lot of models can be in agreement with slightly below average weather. Generally, in the longer term, they revert to what the climatological norm is, which is above average. Now, if I just zoom down, unfortunately, it doesn't show exactly what the anomaly is comparing it to. It'll be interesting to see whether this is the 19, uh, 1980 to 2010 anomaly, 1990 to 2020 anomaly, because that does make a bit of a difference uh, by about uh, point, I think, by, by around 0.5 degrees or so. We'll have to see exactly uh, near the time. But regardless, if you see this week, loads of red and oranges indicating above of average. The following week, still above average. But look at the week after. The blues descend from Scandinavia, implying northerly or northeasterly winds are arriving between the 12th and the 19th. And look happens the week after that. They strengthen and look at that big pool of Arctic air moving out. And you can see not only is the UK and Europe below average, but Scandinavia is below average. And uh, Scandinavia below average in February, March, we'd be looking at upper air temperatures around the minus 15 to minus 20 degree mark there. Because that is not the lightest blue, it is getting towards more moderate blues there. So we'd be looking at a minus 15 to minus 20 degree isotherm there across Scandinavia, the UK, this sort of chart indicating maybe minus 5 to maybe as low as minus 10 getting close. So pretty cold indeed. Uh, and that is pretty rare to be seeing that around three or four weeks away into the subsequent week. Still very cold. And the week following, weaker anomaly, but still cold. So East and the we have weaker anomalies here showing three to maybe as much as four straight weeks of below average temperatures with around two weeks in there of pretty solid widespread below average temperatures giving you the indication that it is potentially going to turn very cold indeed into february now i do want to just show you the next chart which does put a little bit of a spanner in the works this is the weather regime probabilities so if you do look at these five different colors you've got blue positive nao red block green negative nao purple atrs an atlantic ridge regime or gray which is no regime so no sort of overall pattern 
uh, taking over. Now, positive NAO most of you will know that's low pressure towards Greenland, high pressure towards the Azores, very strong westerly. Negative NAO is almost a reversal. Above average pressure towards North Atlantic, towards southern Greenland, northeast Canada, Iceland, but uh, below average pressure more towards the Azores. More inclined with northerlies, if not potentially even easterlies developing. But because it's in the North Atlantic, more likely northerlies for the UK. Block, this is a Scandinavian block. That is would be definitely indicative of easterlies. Atlantic uh, ridging would just be generally high pressure coming out of the Azores into the North Atlantic. But not a proper succinct negative NAO and no regime is kind of in between. We've got a little bit of everything. And you can see over the next week to 10 days, mostly no regime to positive NAO. That's why it's going to be mild, going to be wet and windy further northwards, but further south it's actually nothing too bad. However, as we progress beyond that, look what happens. We see an eclectic mix of different types of blocks. We've got negative NAO for a few days, no regime, then we've got a Scandinavian block, and they've got a bit of Atlantic ridging, then we've got no regime, and then we've got more Scandinavian block into early March. Now, what that indicates to me is that there's going to be a lot of blocking around, just the ensembles here, not quite sure where it's going, which does, which is, um, Fairly reasonable at this time frame, of course, we're looking, you know, a good two, three, four weeks ahead. But it does show you the majority of ones are showing blocking, but this shows you that they're showing it all in slightly different places. But if you're looking for colder weather, you can see around the 10th of February, the buck stops and that positive NAO dissipates to 10 to 20 percent of the ensemble members the majority of others say about 50 to 60 percent have some sort of block whether it's an atlantic ridge negative nao or scandinavian block and you can see the scandinavian block definitely increases in the longer term it is going to be one to watch but it's just give you a very interesting indication that yes majority of runs are showing some sort of high pressure influence some sort of block but they're not in agreement exactly where it's going the chart we saw with the pressure pass and 500 hpa heights Earlier in the video, of course, that is an, a mean from all the ensembles on top of each other. So, of course, they're favouring uh, Greenland towards Scandinavia. You saw the block was huge there. Most likely it won't be that big in reality. That's just the spread of the ensembles at the moment. So, definitely big blocking could be coming, but not quite pinpointed exactly what we'll see with it. Now, if we finish by looking at some meteograms, this is just automatically put in Reading here. That's the location of the ECMWF. And we'll just have a look at this. Uh, if I do try and zoom in, is there a way of zooming in? Uh, I don't think so. But essentially, what we're looking at here is each bar is a week, so from each Monday onwards. And the bars do show you the. Well, the the width of the bar shows you how many ensemble members are in that uh, area, and the height of the bar shows you the spread. So you can see here, for example, at the moment, we've got not that much spread because most ensemble members are in agreement of what we're going to be seeing over the next week. And you can see it is well above average. The thick uh, red line is zero. That's weekly anomaly. So you can see, two meters temperatures, we're well above average. Next week, a bit more spread, some really above average, some just hitting on average, but most still above average. The following week, around the 19th, though, the majority, the middle of this bar, is below average. The majority are well below average here, down to maybe minus one, minus two, minus three. And that actually continues in the subsequent weeks, indicating, yes, there is still spread, but the majority are average to below average in terms of the temperatures. You can also see pressure isn't remarkably high, which does give an indication low pressure will still be close by, which could suggest that something checking jets, potentially upper troughs, things like that, which means it could be cold, but also could be snowy, because we have had you know, colder patterns before, especially last year, where it was very dry. This could suggest that it's potentially a more unsettled colder pattern as well. And you can also see these surface temperatures are cold. Because remember, the two meter temperatures are different to the surface temperatures. Surface is normally doesn't deviate more than a couple of degrees, but both are very cold. And here around the 26th, the surface temperature is really below average, which could be an indication of lots of subsequent cold days, meaning the ground is pretty 
frozen cold indeed. Again, we'll have to see exactly what happens. The Meteo grams are interesting to look at uh just it gives us a bit more of a perspective on the spread within the ensembles but from all the charts listed today all suggesting blocking is coming in february and march and potentially some cold or even maybe even very cold conditions arriving as we progress towards the end of february now i must put the caveat it is still quite far away but these ECWF weekly anomalies can be wrong, but not normally significantly wrong. They can get the, the tune slightly out, but they're not normally too significantly wrong. So I wouldn't be surprised if we did see some major blocking, but in the end, if it just came off as a few days of cold weather, more uh, amplification of the jet stream, I wouldn't be surprised by that either. So there is a spread here of the outcomes, but very bullish latest few runs from the ECWF. And if you are looking for something colder, Looking at something more wintry, this will bring quite a lot of excitement indeed as we do progress towards the latter part of the winter. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. I'll probably have another video like this, but looking at the stratosphere instead, potentially looking at the impact of that as we progress through the rest of winter and early spring, probably on Friday. Have a look at that in more detail as well. So as I said, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.